I guess this is compost. Why are we doing this? Todd is here. Bulletproof? Bulletproof. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> it's working. Welcome to Flip My Florida Yard. On today's episode, our flip crew heads to Central Florida to the historic town of Sanford. It's here we flip a bland front yard into a beautiful Florida-friendly oasis. Please help our yard. We design a drought-tolerant landscape. This yard will be super water efficient. We'll show you the many benefits of a rain barrel. We want to kind of use this barrel to target the root zones of our plants. We look at ways to prevent root rot. I think all root rot can be very devastating for our Florida lawn. And experts share why you should be composting. We are harnessing the magic that is in our food and mm -hmm. in our yard waste. Plus, a reaction <laughs> you have to see to believe. <laughs> All this on Flip My Florida Yard. Flip My Florida Yard is sponsored by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. We're knocking on doors so excited. and flipping yards into beautiful Florida friendly landscapes and all in eight hours. Is this really happening? Who's ready? Woo! Organized chaos. Experts show us how to use Florida friendly landscaping principles. Putting the right plant in the right place. Water efficiently. Very low maintenance. Fertilized appropriately. All leading up to a dramatic reveal. <laughs> the best surprise of our whole life. Oh, it's a beautiful crisp morning here in Sanford, and we're ready to flip a yard. You guys ready to flip a yard? Yeah! Let's go meet the family. Yeah! Wild crew today. Hello. Hey guys, come on out here. What do you think? We're so excited. <laughs> yeah. Hi, my name is Lytalis, and this is Manuel, and we are the, the Ocampo, Ocampo family. family. We're so excited. <laughs> we woke up this morning and we're like, oh, there's a truck out there. They're and starting to bring stuff out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're extremely excited and so blessed that we get this chance. When we bought the house, it was remodeled uh, inside and outside, uh, but they didn't do anything with the front or the backyard. I had tried to do stuff to the yard, but it wasn't really working out. But currently, there's a lot of weeds, not much grass in it, and you know, there's not a lot of plants all together other than what I've tried putting in there, but I know we could do better if we knew what type of plants to put in the right area. We work as a team, so I always cover her back and try to make the job better. He tries. One of the main things that why we signed up for this was because we saw the Florida-friendly landscaping and we really wanted to learn more about it. We're going to transform your yard into a beautiful Florida-friendly landscape. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> well, before you go, I want to introduce you to the men and women who are going to do this today. This is your flip crew. <laughs> Got to get you guys out of here. You ready? Yes. yes. Follow me. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, guys, I need you back here at 4 o'clock sharp, all right? We'll be on time. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye. Oh, let the fun begin. Here we go. Okay, guys, you know what's happening, right? The El Campo family just left. You know what that means? We have eight hours to flip this floor to yard. Who's ready? Yeah! All right, Dave, can we do this? We can. All right, Dave's in a good mood. I love it. Okay, ready and go, 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 go. go. Oh boy, with the clock ticking, the crew is already digging into this flip. Here we go, we're 30 minutes in and things are moving. This is my favorite part of the flip. There's a lot of energy here in the front yard. Right now, the plan is we're trying to get out a lot of this mix of just all kinds of weeds. There's a little bit of hay in there. I have a goal of transforming how people approach yards yeah. and landscaping in general. Landscape architect, David Schroeder is the perfect match for flipping the Ocampo's yard into a Florida-friendly landscape. We're trying to go from resource consumptive landscapes that require a lot of fertilizers, waters, and, and, and labor to one that's more low maintenance, lower resource use, uh, drought tolerant, and that was something the Ocampo's had asked for. Yeah. They wanted to bring in birds and butterflies, and they also wanted it to be extremely water sensitive. Kind of walk me through some of the major features of this design, David. As the homeowners come home, they'll come up their driveway, and that's where the rain garden is. We're going to have 
plants there that can tolerate wet feet, but they can also dry out in between rains. Yeah. And then Italis walks down here and crosses the street to get to her mom's house. Nice. We're going to put a little bridge in there so that she can get over the drainage swale without getting her feet muddy. We're going to have uh, some containers there with some annuals, and that'll give them an opportunity to have a little small area that they can change out mm. with whatever they feel like. Yep. Um, we're going to be planting a red maple and a Simpson stopper. Both of those will create like a nice little protected zone. Well, you know, David, we're dealing with a homeowner who's, who's really engaged, right? They want to be out here. They want to be involved. And because of that, we've created this kind of self-watering irrigation system. Uh, tell us about that concept. How's that going to work? We're going to set up just regular old sprinkler systems, not a, not a big irrigation system. But they're going to have to water daily for the yeah. first several weeks. David's plan also calls for a rain barrel, which the Ocampos can use for targeted watering. And a composting bin will turn yard and household waste into recycled soil. Rain barrels, composting bins, you know, this kind of environmentally friendly front yard. Dave, are you seeing more people ask for this kind of uh, front yard? More and more every year. The awareness ha has grown so much that uh, people are seeking us out now, and it's really a desire from homeowners. Today's flip in Sanford, Florida is well underway. Our homeowners are off exploring Wakaiwa Springs State Park while we transform their yard into a Florida-friendly oasis. The environment is extremely important for us uh, and water conservation as well. Flip designer David Schroeder chose drought-tolerant plants, trees, and turf that will thrive without a traditional irrigation system. I feel like he hit the nail on the head with, with the plants that he chose. Really forward-thinking in the sense that this is a zero irrigation, you know, landscape. But before any new plantings go in, this blank slate will get a fresh coat of organic soil. So Dave, we're adding some soil here. I guess this is compost. Why are we doing this? Well, we're doing this for two reasons. One, we're gonna add nutrients to the soil. Our, yeah. our Florida soils are lacking nutrients. You know, we have very sandy soils. Nutrients get pulled out of there. More importantly, with this drought tolerant uh, landscape, the organic matter that we're adding will help retain moisture. Okay. So that's gonna make their watering a lot easier. David, when you talk about landscaping, how important is soil? Oh, it, it's key. Just like with farmers, if you got good soil, you're gonna have good plants. If you don't have good soil, plants are going to struggle. I mean, look at that, right? That's good stuff, right? That's great stuff right there. One of the major design features in the front yard is a pavered pathway. Look at this. In no time at all, we have our pathway, which meanders its way all the way up to the front door. It's a really interesting product here. It's kind of designed to emulate the kind of random pattern you get with flagstone. But as you can see, they've taken this pipe and they've drawn a line here. Next step is to cut these edges. So this will end up as a nice, smooth path leading all the way up to the walkway. This is gonna look really nice. Our focus here today, we want an eco-friendly environment. So what's good about our pavers, they're made out of recycled material, just a great overall value to your property, but also still maintain within environmental standards. While we're busy in the yard, for the Ocampos, it's a day of relaxing at Wakaiwa Springs State Park. We have a great, great time. Where emerald-colored springs feed into the Wakaiwa River. The park's tropical hammocks and abundant wildlife can be explored on foot, bike, kayak, or canoe. And this urban oasis is just minutes from downtown Orlando. Back in the yard, Chris Bow with Evolving Landscapes has been cutting and assembling a special project for the Ocampos. This is a serious structure here. What do we have here? Well, this is a three-bin compost system, and yeah, I overbuilt them a little bit, <laughs> but uh, we like to make them last I mean, this year. thing is solid. We're gonna have some removable slats along the front here. Okay. You fill one up. And when this one gets full, okay. start filling the next one. When this one gets full, start filling the next one. By the time you get through this third one, yeah. that should be ready to go. It's just a rotating system. Nice. And you'll have constant good compost year round. So tell me about this finish here. I mean, this is really unique. Well, this is the ancient Japanese technique of preserving wood by burning it. It's called shoshugiban. It's a really neat process. We shoshugiban. Shoshugiban. Chris is using a blowtorch to burn the wood. The traditional Japanese method uses a kiln. <laughs> Can I try it? You better. Part of maintaining a yard is treating it for disease. And one of Florida's most common and destructive, root rot. Take all root rot can be very devastating for our Florida lawns. We caught up with Philip Harmon from the University of Florida to learn how to identify and treat root rot. Take all root rot disease of St. Augustine grass is one of the most important and devastating diseases that occur in Florida lawns. The disease effectively takes the roots out, does not allow them to bring up water and nutrients from the lawn, 
and the lawn suffers from drought stress, nutrient stress, and eventually it can kill the Florida lawn that we're trying to manage. Overwatered lawns are more likely to have take all root rot and more likely for that take all root rot to become severe and to kill the turf grass that it's affecting. The first symptoms that we see that indicate that our roots are in trouble are the turf grass starting to wilt. There's another is uh, the symptom of a lack of nutrients. And so grass, when it's nice and healthy, is dark green, thick and lush. If we have a root rot, the grass is not able to get the nutrients that it needs to produce the leaf material, so it can become yellow, thin, and, uh, and otherwise unhealthy looking. If it's determined that you do have root rot, we have several options that we can follow up with to try to prevent the disease from becoming worse. Those include adjusting your irrigation schedule and the amount of irrigation that's applied, adjusting the height of cut of the turf grass to reduce stress, and then also chemical fungicides can be applied if the disease is early in its stages. So the only way to know for sure why your lawn has failed is to determine if a disease was involved. The way to do that is to collect the sample and contact your county extension office or send directly to the Plant Diagnostic Center at the University of Florida. We process over 3,000 samples a year of turf grass and uh, the majority of those do come back with some level of take-all root rot. I think the most important thing for preventing take-all root rot from, from ruining your lawn is to carefully manage your irrigation and the amount and timing of irrigation that you apply. That's the number one reason we see lawns fail. Now, back to our flip. The Ocampo family's front yard in Sanford, Florida was a green desert. When I first saw this property, there was basically a yard full of weeds. But with the help of our flip crew, it's on its way to becoming a beautiful Florida-friendly landscape. Italis is gonna love this. This is what she really wanted. While the Ocampo's composting bin is being built, I get a lesson from Seminole County Extension agent, Tina McIntyre, about how to turn your trash into treasure. One of the main principles of a Florida-friendly landscaping, number seven, recycling your yard waste, First of all, like, what does that mean? Well, our yards create a lot of organic matter, such as leaves or grass clippings and things like that. And with Florida, we have such poor nutrient sandy soils that we really want to capture that opportunity to put that organic material back into our soil. Here are a few more tips for recycling yard waste. Leave your grass clippings on the lawn after you mow and rake leaves into your flower beds, which will provide a natural mulch. The next level of recycling your yard waste, composting. What we wanna do is foster an environment that's gonna kind of break down that yard waste in a way that's gonna produce what we call humus, and that's what's gonna benefit our plants. So we wanna start with greens okay. and browns. So give me some example of greens here, what do we got? Right, so for greens, you can really turn to your kitchen. Okay. So here, I like to use in my kitchen a clear jar, but we're gonna be putting in any kind of vegetable scraps. Okay. Banana peels, apple cores, you know, the food that you just don't eat, you cut off yeah. that part. Now let's talk about the brown. What can go in a compost bin, Tina? Your browns, you're gonna turn to those leaves. I see paper products, so paper products too? Absolutely, so inside of our homes, we're creating things that are very compatible with the compost. We have uh, toilet paper roll, paper towel rolls, tissues, napkins, even some paper plates. You don't want to choose anything that has like a waxy coating or is really colored. In our compost pile, we're going to have microbes. Those are great. We're going to have worms and insects and vertebrates. Yeah. And those are what are doing the work to compost this down. And the organic matter is really what makes compost different. And so when we have that organic material, at the root zone, it allows for that water to hang out longer yeah. in a good way. How long does it take to get from this table scraps to the end product right here? It depends on what you put into it, but generally speaking, about six months. Six months. Mm -hmm. And is it worth it? It absolutely is <laughs> worth it. So we want to not only reduce our waste to the landfill, but actually create a beneficial product in our landscape with those organic materials. Along with the compost bin, Chris is also building the Ocampos a bat house. Bats reduce common insect pests by consuming them in large quantities, which make these nocturnal mammals an important part of a Florida-friendly landscape. You're creating that natural ecosystem within your very own landscape. I want to have you take me around the yard on a little tour. I want you to show me some of the plants that maybe you're excited about or that stand out to you. This is our native kunti. This yeah. is an ancient plant. This was around when dinosaurs were here. Yeah. When customers say they want low maintenance, this is the first word out of my mouth. 
Don't put them in a swampy area. Okay. They can take full sun and full shade. That's iconic Florida native, iconic. right? Iconic. Yeah. Yes, sir. We have some wildflowers back here. This is called dotted horse mint. When it's blooming, it has all sorts of pollinators. I've yeah. seen probably seven different bee species on it wow. at one time. Now, this and is then, familiar to, for me to hear. No? Yeah, this is another iconic Florida native. This is called dune sunflower. OK. And here we are in January, and it's got flowers on it. How great is that? And then over here. I mean, this is the classic. This is the wax myrtle. This is a small tree. Yeah. And wildlife loves it. Between the Simpson stopper, the, the wax myrtle, I mean, it's going to attract a lot of birds, a lot of wildlife into this front yard, right? Birds, butterflies, and bees. The Ocampo's flip is heading towards the finish line, from a composting bin to drought-tolerant plants. Our flip designer, David's plan, is to make this yard almost completely sustainable which means very low water use. We're gonna use just traditional hoses and sprinkler systems with a battery timer system that hooks right to the hose bib. And then they can monitor that and kind of wean the landscape off the water. As you can see, they're just placed throughout the yard. This is gonna give a good broad coverage. The Ocampos are still gonna to need to kind of come in here and do some target watering on things that we're not quite getting, but this is gonna get the broad surfaces. Another item on the Ocampos wish list was a rain barrel. To make this fully functional as a water source, we installed a gutter system designed to divert water from the roof into the barrel. The rain barrels are gonna save the homeowners water and money on their water bill. Yeah. So this one barrel is gonna be great for watering our potted plants, okay. our hanging baskets. Yeah and then really target watering. And also, it's gonna help save water from the aquifer. Okay, you ready to test it? Absolutely. All right. Oh yeah! <laughs> it's working. All right. <laughs> Once this fills up to a certain point, you can come down here, open that up, fill up your watering can, and you're ready to water. Once those plants are established, they're really not gonna need a lot of supplemental water. So they're in a landscape that the soil is very compatible, the saturation of the soil is very compatible, and it's very similar to what they actually evolved in here in Florida. With less than an hour left, the final piece of this process has arrived. So Dave, Bahia, you know, we're sodding now. Why'd you choose Bahia? Well, I know it doesn't look the best <laughs> right now. It doesn't look right now, I know. <laughs> but this is by far the most drought tolerant sod we have. And yeah. since we're not going with the temporary irrigation system here, you know, we're, we're going with the old school sprinkler system. Yeah. We needed this stuff to get established and then the homeowner's not to have to worry about it. Bulletproof? Bulletproof. Good deal, let's get All it right, down. let's get it down. With four o'clock closing in and the Ocampos on their way home, the finishing touches are put in place. This yard is officially Flit. I cannot wait to see Manuel and Italis's reaction. Uh, I think we're going to blow them away. Are you ready? Yeah! yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> I think they're ready. Yeah, yes, we're ready. We are. Here's our glasses. You got to pitch out. Pick out one of the orange ones there. I like the oranges. Orange. Yeah. yeah. I love Fancy. orange. Follow me. Here we go. And I feel some raindrops. We're doing this just in the nick of time. Are you ready? Yes! yes. Are you guys ready? Yes! All right. One, two, Three, remove your glasses. Wow! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Wow! Oh my gosh, it looks so beautiful! <laughs> Before, this yard was an overgrown weed bed, but now it's a neighborhood showstopper. From the new pavered pathway and bridge to Florida friendly plants and trees to the rain barrel, bat house, and composting bin. This yard is a shining example of a landscape in tune with Florida's environment. Wow! Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, this is David's design. David, Yay! great job, man. Yay! Really, Yay! You and your team, Woo! incredible job. Yeah. How beautiful. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and I can't believe we did it all in one day. When I took my glasses off, I it looked like a different house. It was completely different, and of course, I just started crying because I got emotional, but wow, what a difference, what a difference. It's, it, we love it. It's more than I expected. I mean, we got 
details that we always dream. <laughs> a lot more than we expected that we would get. We, it's awesome, it's great. We really hope that our yard can inspire our neighbors um, to learn more about the Florida friendly landscaping. Um, and so we're out here, if they have questions, they can come out and I think that will be a, a point of conversation um, and to you know create better connections with everybody in our street. We don't really have much of a choice. We need to start planting more native plants because they're getting removed throughout so much of the rest of the acreage of Florida. Each homeowner needs to do what they can to do their part. Flip my Florida yard! Atalus and Manuel's new flip is a great example of a sustainable yard that uses Florida-friendly plants and principles. Well, that's our show. We hope you're inspired to help Florida's environment by starting in your own yard. And remember, Everyone doing a little? Well, that's a whole lot. Flip My Florida Yard was brought to you by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection in partnership with the University of Florida Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences Florida Friendly Landscaping Program. As you can see, all of our grass is fully green now. Things are growing beautifully. We have seen butterflies that have shown up, more birds. Can you hear those birds right now? They're loving it. Our neighbors love it and we are loving it too. It turns out to be more beautiful every day.